Long-term run here on the video report with the complimentary plays over the past eight months. How about 236 wins versus 198 losses? The short-term roll over the past three weeks. How about 14 out of 18 after giving it Gonzaga last night, getting the job done against St. Mary's? I've got two, if not three, plays coming up here for the Wednesday card in just a moment. Guys, it's almost 5 a.m. Eastern time as I'm shooting this video report. I just got done researching all the games here overnight and during the overnight hours. As you have probably heard by now, by the time you're watching this video, of course, George Martin, the legendary producer of the Beatles, passed away. And in reading all the different things, I thought one of the most interesting blurbs was something that Martin said himself in an interview a few years back. Asked about his favorite Beatles memory. He said if he had to pick just one, it would be back in 1966 when he heard, for the first time ever, Strawberry Fields Forever, John Lennon playing it on his acoustic guitar. And that's a moment he said he should never forget. He would never forget. It was a wonderful thing to happen. It stays with him even now. Think about that. Of all the songs the Beatles were famous for, of all those incredible, incredible creative productions they had, John Lennon, an acoustic guitar, Strawberry Fields Forever. And of course, you know what the song eventually turned into after it got orchestrated, after the magic and the wizardry of the production was done. It just struck me as so funny. The other thing, of course, listen, the Beatles were before my time, okay? But, um, you know, they, they were disbanded before I really understood what the hell music was. Uh, but um, when you think about that era, who's left? You know, Martin's now gone. Brian Epstein's long been gone. George and John have been gone. I mean, it's Paul. It's Ringo. And on the fringe, if you want to say Yoko Ono, that's it. That error. That's all. Interesting. Um, guys, you know, I've often said here uh, on the video reports, and you have probably figured out that I am somewhat jaded when it comes to sports because, hey, listen, you do this every single day. Again, it's five o'clock in the morning. I just got done handicapping and researching games for the last four hours. It's like working at a candy store. You don't want to smell the candy. Trust me. I used to work in a candy department at a major department store. After eight hours, after a couple of weeks, every single day, I didn't want to eat another piece of candy ever again. You get jaded after a while. Um, but I will say that this week, back in 1987, had the most incredible experience ever when it came to sports as a true fan. Listen, we're talking about tournament basketball right now, but it's spring training time. And you know, spring training to me now is just another commercial endeavor. It's no different than the regular season. It's all about putting fans in the stands, how much you can make from them. It's a corporate experience. It's not like the old days. So 1987 on this day, I'll never forget because the basketball tournaments were just starting and stuff, had my first Camaro, beautiful red Camaro. Uh, another friend and I, we took off from Philadelphia driving the Clearwater. Uh, my uncle, who was friends with the Phillies president at the time, got us hotel rooms in the same hotel complex that the Phillies minor leaguers were staying. Now, I was just beginning my career as a reporter, but I wasn't going as a reporter. I was going as a fan. I was going collecting baseball cards along the way with my friend to see how many autographs we could pick up. And it was a different time and a different era. I mean, this was the time that you would go to at the time Phillies were playing in Jack Russell Stadium. And, you know, if there were 1,000, 1,800, 2,500 people there, that was a good day. I mean, you could find seats anywhere, usually right there along the outfield, sitting on a folding chair, and that was Nirvana. So in the first 24 hours, the first 24 hours of arriving in Clearwater, Florida, we built an entourage, or we had an entourage find us. Uh, the father of a then-current general manager in the uh, American League, uh, an insurance salesman from Chicago, two girls from Wathena, Kansas, who were there for spring break. I don't know what they were doing in Clearwater, but hey, they were from Wathena, Kansas. There was nothing more exciting going on, so they figured they'd come to Clearwater. A baseball junkie slash groupie, an 18-year-old girl from the Clearwater area. That was it. Within the first day, 
this group, an unlikely group as ever, came together and bonded because of baseball. Literally, we go see the Phillies in Clearwater at the 1 o'clock game. Then we go head over to Frenchies on the beach, watch the sun go down, maybe get a quick bite at Hooters, if not, and then head off to a nighttime game in Bradenton, perhaps, to see, uh, who was it, the Pirates at the time. We go over to Plant City, which was just opening, and see the Reds for an afternoon game and do a reverse and see the Phillies at night. We go up to Lakeland and see the Tigers, and those were the days. I can remember sitting there, second day in spring training, right there at, uh, what, Al Lang Stadium down in St. Petersburg. The Cardinals were playing. And in those days, the bullpen was here. We were right there. We were sitting on folding chairs right behind the entire St. Louis Cardinals bullpen talking to the guys. Talking to the starters, the player, the reserves, the guys that had no chance of making the team. Just talking, chatting the whole game. It was much more relaxed. It was a different atmosphere then. And it's a shame because one year later, going back, it had already started to turn more corporate. And of course now it's, eh, it just doesn't have anything for me. But without a doubt, still the most best time spending two weeks doing that and having no, absolutely no worries in the world. Betting games as I went, not betting spring training games. I'm not that sick, okay? Betting college conference games like those that are going on today and watching spring training games. There could be nothing better than that. Other than about six weeks later, then I decided to go on a baseball junk at the Wrigley Field, flew out on the afternoon, on a Friday afternoon with a friend, saw the Cubs in the afternoon, left in the seventh inning, drove to, uh, what is it, what it used to be called in Milwaukee, uh, County Stadium uh, in Milwaukee then, that night usually got there by the bottom of the first inning to see the White Sox take on the Brewers, did it on Friday, did it on Saturday, Sunday saw the Cubs again at home against the Phillies, and then Decided to go to Appleton, Wisconsin, because we like the team's baseball caps. We love the caps, the Appleton Foxes, just to go see an Appleton Foxes games. And then hopped on a plane the very next morning, six games in less than uh, three days. Yeah, those were the days I used to be a baseball junkie and a fan, probably just like you. Hey, uh, listen, I can't tell you what's going on in terms of the uh, promotions here at the site, because... Uh, other than the Chuck O'Brien and I think Gabriel DuPont, nobody else is up at this hour. I can tell you, however, that Chuck O'Brien is going to be one of the discounted plays today. Uh, Chuck O'Brien, what a phenomenal run it has been in the three months since he has rejoined the site after a near three-year absence. A good guy. He's gone 43-25-1 and one in college basketball with $10 betters, making a little while over $5,100. Today, 59 winner number 22 out of 33 at Syracuse and Pittsburgh. It's a noon Eastern time kit tip. You get it for more than half price off, saving uh, $55 simply by using the coupon code CHUCK, his first name, just like his 59 winner on Saturday with Virginia minus five and a half hammering Louisville by 22. I think last uh, Wednesday he had one with Fresno State over Colorado State. Last Tuesday it was Vanderbilt over Tennessee. This play is just as strong as I said. All the other discounts, etc. make sure you check out the uh, homepage. Uh, they should be up by 10 o'clock Eastern time, which means... Gee, it means after I post this video, I get a whole three and a half hours of sleep before I start working again. Oh, what a thrill. Okay, let's get to your complimentary plays. Um, I'll do these in reverse chronological order. Guys, I'm going to dip my toes into the Patriot League. Now, I'm going to dip my toes into the Patriot League as a complimentary play. The one thing that I want to emphasize to you, the one thing that you have to remember from this day going forward to the end of the big dance is if you have no experience with teams in Conference USA, have no inkling of what's going on in the Sun Belt Conference, don't suddenly start betting teams in those tournaments. It's just ridiculous. Go with the girl you brought to the dance. So, for me, you're going to see a lot of Sun Belt plays, Conference USA plays, some Pac-12 plays. Uh, you're going to see um, very few ACC plays because it wasn't a tournament I had a lot of success in this year. You're going to see some Atlantic 10 plays. I think that's the key, that when you get to the postseason, when you have these orgy of games, that you've got to be able to keep going to the conferences that you have been following, in my case, since the beginning of November when college basketball really got underway. Those are your go-to conferences. It's the way you make money over the next four weeks. FYI, keep in mind, when the tournament, the big dance, starts next week, as I have done each of the last five years, I'm going to get every single handicapper at the site to fill out their tournament bracket. We'll post it here at the site next week. You'll be able to look at them, download them in a PDF form. The reason I do that is that we, 
for the most part, have an inherent advantage over Joe Q Public when it comes to the brackets because if you do what I'm doing, as I've done every single day over the last five months, we know what's going on in the Summit League and Conference USA and the Mountain West and the Big West, the West Coast Conference, all these minor league things. So when you're looking at some of those tougher matchups on the board, when you're looking at the brackets, I always feel that I have an inherent advantage over, as I said, Joe Q Public, because I know what these teams are doing. I've seen them play. I've watched what they've done. I know who's entering the postseason on a roll and who's not. And you have a better chance at looking at the matchups. And it really pays dividends when you're looking at those middle of the bracket seeds throughout the tournament, especially in the first two rounds, where you've got to accumulate enough wins in order to have a chance to make money as the tournament progresses. But that's for next week. Let me, once again, start with the Patriot League, where you have Lehigh playing at home, minus the nine and a half points uh, against Holy Cross. I'm actually thinking about going to that game. It's in Stabler Arena, which is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm in Pennsylvania right now. And that's like maybe an hour from where I live and stuff. I, I might even go to this game tonight. Uh, it's a nice little place. I've been there before. I, I don't know. might be just something to do because I've got nothing else to do tonight. Oh, my God, what's wrong with me? I'm going to go to a game. Uh, anyway, listen, Lehigh, um, you know, they swept the season series against Holy Cross. And Holy Cross is kind of interesting. They're a number nine seed that has won three straight road games in order to reach this championship game. Holy Cross didn't win one single game on the conference road all season long. I think they were 0-9. Now, meanwhile, Lehigh started off poorly at one point. Uh, end of January, after losing to Boston University on a buzzer beater, they were 6-14 and 14 straight up, 4-5 and five in conference play. Have not lost again since that January 31st night. Rolling off 11 straight wins, including seven in a row at home. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay the points with Lehigh, noting that Holy Cross, uh, why they have gone 0-9 on the conference road in regular season play. Six of those nine losses were by double-digit margins. And, of course, I've got to lose by double digits here tonight. I will also point out kind of an interesting little tidbit that for Lehigh, this is their fourth title game appearance, their previous three in 4 10, and 12. Um, I think they're going to just win this particular game. Uh, again, I think this is a, uh, a good spot to take a road, go against a road weary team in Holy Cross and, uh, forget about the fact that the Crusaders are six and a lifetime in the Patriot League against Lehigh. This is the first time they've met in the title game. And it's the first time in those games where Lehigh has been the host. So I'm going to go with Lehigh in this one, Lehigh, the Mount, let me just check the Mountain Hawks, I think. Yes, the Mountain Hawks. That's who they are. Okay, your next complimentary play. I'm going to take a shot with Kansas State. Listen, I don't think that Kansas State is that good, but they have one little advantage today. The Big 12 tournament is being played at the Sprint Center in Kansas City. It's not Manhattan, Kansas. I've been to Manhattan, Kansas. I want to go there again. I'll say that much. It's a small town. But uh, this one, of course, in Kansas City, you are at least playing close. You're going to have the fan support, right? Wildcats finished by losing five of their last seven games. Ugh, not exactly great, right? But the Cowboys closed out with six straight losses. They lost 15 of their final 18 games. They were 0-9 on the Big 12 highway. The favorite has covered 14 of the last 17 in this series, and that's good enough reason for me to lay the five points with Kansas State today. Your early complimentary play, I'm going to go into the Conference USA, and I'm going to take Western Kentucky minus the seven and a half points. Uh, the game is being played in Birmingham against North Texas. It's the number eight and number nine seeds. Uh, the Hilltoppers close strong winning four of their final five games. The only loss in that stretch coming by four points at first place UAB in Birmingham. Uh, they covered all five of those games. They're coming off a 96-90 overtime win against a pretty good Louisiana Tech team at home on Saturday. Lone meeting this season in North Texas. Um, Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers, won that game back in the middle of January, 81-76. to They shot 45% on the road in that game, okay? Even though North Texas shot 48% at home, the uh, Mean Green lost that game. Why? Because Western Kentucky, one of the top 50 teams in the nation, I think they're 35th ranked in terms of rebounding, they hit the rack hard. They did a very good job. Consequently, they got to the line 36 or 30 times and I think hit 22 of their 30 free throws. Meanwhile, North Texas only got to the line 26 times playing at home and they only hit 15 of their 26 
free throws. Now, North Texas did snap a three-game losing streak with a home upset of uh, NC Charlotte as an underdog in their home finale over the weekend. But listen, uh, eight straight conference road losses after winning their opener in Conference USA play today uh, this year for North Texas. Eight in a row. Uh, both teams give up a lot of points. Western Kentucky gives up like 75. Uh, North Texas gives up 78. But Western Kentucky is the better shooting team. North Texas also a significant injury here. Uh, one of their key players, uh, sophomore forward, uh, Jeremy Combs, he had a high ankle sprain he suffered in last Thursday's loss against Old Dominion. Did not play in the season finale against NC Charlotte on Saturday. You know what it is, guys. Athletes, high ankle sprains. You're asking for a lot for these guys to come back. And this guy is so important. 6'7", sophomore forward. He averaged a little over 15 points and nearly 11 rebounds uh, this season. In the lone meeting, which again, North Texas lost at home this year, uh, he had 21 points and 12 rebounds in that game. So, Western Kentucky has won five straight in the series. Uh, they out-rebounded 16 of their 18 conference foes this season. This is really my second favorite play on the board today, right behind my best bet, which is on the Washington-Stanford afternoon game. I like Western Kentucky. I'm willing to lay the 7.5. I think that if Combs does play, he's not going to be near 50%, let alone 100%. And I think Western Kentucky playing with a little confidence, having won four of their last five, they can cover the spread against an equally defenseless North Texas team. So again, your complimentary plays, if I had to rate them, would be Western Kentucky at the top, Probably after that, because I hate Bruce Weber and I hate Kansas State so much, I would probably then go with Lehigh from the Patriot League and then move Kansas State as the number three spot. That'll do it, guys. Remember, catch all your promos, discounts, etc. Basically, for the next three weeks, uh, you know, Wednesday or Thursday through Sunday, this is the exception, this being a Wednesday, I will try to have these video reports live for you by 9, 10 o'clock Eastern time in the morning so you can get your complimentary plays and get a rundown of what's going on since we're going to have action every single one of those days, usually by noon Eastern. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.